if you look at the world, you can draw some parallels. Look at the EU. It started as a cold, cold union. Then it evolved over the years. European Free Trade Area Organization, European Economic Commission, eventually the European Union. Now we took a bold step from the OEU to jump to African Union, trying to bring ourselves to the level with the EU. But we're not there. And all the times there are two things that are all the times at our play. Sovereignty and unity. In my view, those two things should not be competing. They are complementary. And if we find a way of dealing with that issue, AU will be able to work for the people of the continent. 1.4 billion. In the next 20 more years, one third of the population is going to be living on this continent. And Africa is the richest continent on the planet Earth in terms of resources. The paradox is the richest resource of the poorest in terms of living conditions of its people. This is what we need to be dealing with. And if we deal with that, Africa will rise. And tomorrow I'll be telling you a story of the African lion. And this message to the other animals. So I don't want to preempt what I'm going to say tomorrow. I've acted as high, high representative on infrastructure on the continent. If you don't address infrastructure, then the bureaucracies which the president is talking about, the non-tariff barriers that we have put against each other, will not be able to benefit from the potential that we have as a continent of Africa. You are here as representatives of your countries. You need to ensure that your presence here benefits your people. So Addis Ababa should not just be a place where people come every year, jets inside, and go and, and talk, and resolutions are passed. After that, 80% of those resolutions are not implemented. That's where we want to find a solution. So that rhetoric and actions are brought together. We continue to have an unfair share of instability, insecurity, and challenges in our continent, whether it is terrorism, conflict, um, that, that is affecting our continent and by extension affecting trade, affecting investment, and doesn't give a very good picture of where we are. A case in point, um, yesterday we, I was in uh, Juba uh, to encourage our brothers in uh, that country when they gave me an assignment to get the opposition to work with the government. I was very happy that we had a breakthrough yesterday. We are uh, concluding the mediation there. Next week we have uh, the civilian groups meeting in Nairobi from our neighbors in Sudan to see what they can do about their country. Last week we were in Bujumbura at a Comesa meeting to discuss how, you know, whether as we do trade, 
how do we manage uh, the issues in the Great Lakes region. We have issues in uh, Sahel. We have issues in the Horn of Africa. So our peace and security infrastructure requires a rethink. We cannot continue the way we are continuing. I think the days of, you know, the 20,000 AU uh, peacekeeping force are slowly fading away. And we need, as Africa, to begin to take charge of our peace support mechanisms in our continent. I was very happy that last December, um, the UN res uh, res uh, resolution that now peacekeeping efforts led by AU will be funded by assessed contributions by the United Nations. That gives us more leverage. But the AU has to be better prepared to undertake this responsibility. There is certainly a very big case for us to make in reorganizing the AU Peace and Security Council, including the Peace Fund, and make it much more sustainable and see how we can have greater say in the stability of our continent because it is necessary for us if we have to attract investment and if we have to do trade, we have to stabilize and there must be peace and security. On matters um, financing. I think we can be innovative in, in how we finance our organization. For example, let me give two examples. When we pushed the UN so that we passed this resolution 20, I think it was 2719, it was another way of bringing sustainability into the peace operations of AU. If we can leverage on the UN and the assessed contributions in the UN to fund AU peace operations and the AU peace fund, it expands our horizon of sustainability. That's number one. Number two, you remember that uh, in the last AU summit, our African financial institutions, Africa Exim Bank, Trade Development Bank, ATI, AFC, I think there are seven different organizations. They came to see me in Nairobi and they told me, look, we are African institutions, but we are not recognized by the African Union. We don't have the stamp of approval of the African Union as African financial institutions. We recognize the World Bank, we recognize the IMF, we recognize all the others, but our own African institutions, we don't. It is the reason why we sponsored the resolution for these organizations, African institutions, to be recognized as having the approval of Africa Union and all our countries. We have also made a decision as heads of state that we are going to buy more shares. Like for example, Kenya, we are buying more shares in Africa, we are buying more shares in TDB, we're buying more shares because we need to support this institution because they support our economists.